Welcome to the final of the juniors in the WPA World Championship. I'm Alex Lely from the Netherlands. I'm here with Mike Kablukov from Russia, from Moscow. Hello, I think. everyone. Uh, that's correct. The race 211, Fedor Gorst is up against the surprising finalists. Uh, yeah, we've got another Moscow player here involved, and uh, I wouldn't uh, call. Uh, and Gvold, Temujin, a surprising finalist, as long as uh, he is the runner-up of last year, actually. So he was uh, defeated by a player from China, I think, uh, in Shanghai in mm -hmm. 2016. But, well, um, me personally, I was kind of uh, expecting him to perform again, so, so far he does. Okay, <laughs> well... I'm the coach, I was here as the coach of Jan van Lierop, who met Temujin in the semi-final. I guess I haven't done my homework correctly. But he played good Temujin in the semi-final. The semi-final between Gorst and Hoffman was not such high level. Just a very, you know, nervous affair. Both players made more mistakes than what we're used to seeing from them. Both Gorst and Hoffman, multi-heralded European champions. A race to 11. Alternate break. Gorst here off to the races in rec 1. Well, I think in a while we are going to have the writing fixed because Temujin is basically the name of a Mongolian player and his last name is Ankbold. Ankbold. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think uh, it could be a little bit uh, harder for us commentators, but well, we could name them Fedor and Temujin and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, a little off angle on the six. Don't know if he played to go for the six in the corner. Fedorgorst has a very nice rhythm when he plays. Quicker paced player. So young and so experienced already. Yeah, he almost steamrolled through the brackets. Like uh, He played Patrick Hoffman of Germany twice. First he won with ease, like a 9 to 2. It was the other way, a little bit a different story in the semi final, I think. Against uh, Hoffman, yes, it was 11 8. But the quarter final, he beat uh, Yip. Yeah. And he won that match handily. It was 11 3, I think. Oh, did he play for this side, or? Well, I think so, yeah. A little awkward, since he misplayed that draw shot off of the seven. And that's rack one to Feather. Fedor Gors, the two-time European champion, opens the lead in this final. Played in Moscow. Kristina Tukac just won her match. Could be two gold medals for Team Russia. Yeah, Amanda we've had Rasaya here in <laughs> we Moscow. We've had uh, both uh, our strong favorites for the titles, Kristina and Fedor. Both are uh, in the finals, so Christina already delivered. <coughs> and there's his uh, the proper name, Engvold. 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 You tend to read this uh, like Russians do. Okay. <laughs> because it's V in Russia. <laughs> Enkbolt. Yeah. From Mongolia. Yeah. Actually, mm, I think uh, it's only two years I've uh, ever heard about uh, uh, Mongolian playing pool. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't aware of it at all. 
that actually they uh, seem to have pretty strong players there because uh, some of them were at the Asian Games this year at the uh, Taipei Universidad and just okay. they they can they can play they play us but the break here illegal so initiative goes to Feder. he can make the two difficulty is to get shape on a three ball he's looking at running into the nine there's a relatively easy safety to stun draw behind the three and banking the two ball back up table he could also soft draw go into the six and leave himself a bank on the three here's left Yaroslav Sev. He's the the main the main man. I don't know his exact position in uh, Russia. He, he, he's, he's the vice president for local billiard federation. He's been around for ages. Actually, the first time I came to Moscow, uh, maybe he's usually 60, 60 years <laughs> ago, <laughs> he hosted me. They had the World Pyramid Championships. He's usually the team leader for Team Russia at the European Championships. Difficult shot this. Even to just get the safety. Well, he did what he had to do. The only thing he could have done better here is was to get that three ball closer to the rail. Well, it's just the same principle I think you mentioned uh, in the match earlier. Just take care uh, of the object ball. Object ball first. If you don't, if you're not sure of the cue ball. Now he can spin the ball short, long, long. Go towards the nine. But he played an easier way. Just a high ball, controlling the three ball. Nicely done. Yeah, very nice. He had uh, two options, like uh, the six and uh, five, as possible blockers. Yeah. So he used only one, but he's he's good there. No jump available. It's a question. The question is if Feder needs right spin to get to that three ball off of the short rail. If he doesn't need right spin, it's it's somewhat easier can play a full hit to send the three ball in between the seven and eight and maybe even end up behind the seven. So he's going one rail. Worked out fine. Buying himself a little time. Full hit, just go forward, bank the three back, and keep the cue ball behind the eight. That's that's the simplest shot there is. But he doesn't see it, I think. He's looking for a way to leave distance between the balls. Yeah, once again, bringing the red three to the short rail, leaving distance. Yeah, it's a good shot. Funny angle for Feder. Uh, he's going to be jacked up a little bit, playing off the rail. Enough space between the rail and the three to hit it on the right side. Bank the three back and two rails for the cue ball behind the eight. I think it's on. Too thin. Was a good shot by Ankbolt. And he's getting the reward for it. Can't leave himself too much angle on the five. Then he'd be running into the seven.
managed to get in straight in or at least on the proper side of the six Making a reset, Ankbolt wants to be sure. Had he pulled the trigger there and then, he'd be favorite to place it well, but he wants to be sure it has to be perfect. Reminds me a little of Konstantin Stepanov, how he strikes the ball, ankle bolt. Very fluid. And that's 1 1. Good safety play. And both of our leading players, Konstantin Stepanov and uh, Ruslan Chinakov, uh, they have. Uh, so fluid strokes. Uh, I've heard of people uh, uh, coming at the Derby City, like the Derby Straight Pool Challenge, only to watch uh, them playing these smooth, like yeah. backstroke follow through. Big swings. Big shooters. Are you going to the Derby City again this year? No, no. I, mean I didn't winter? go last yeah. year and I'm not going this time. Any re special reason for this? Yeah, it's too much for me. It's <laughs> overkill. I cannot pace myself. So, I you know, I'll go once, twice a year to the States. and I, I prefer going to a city and then through Airbnb renting an apartment and having a kitchen and yeah. at least at the end of the night or in the early morning going back to a normal apartment yeah, as opposed to staying at the yeah, hotel in the end, at the all the weekend in the derby city at the end i'm a zombie and i don't like that he's going to the derby gorst he has done well there in the past so young but already bangs and one pocket you know he he holds himself well uh, he's a fast learner like uh, every champion good point you gotta learn quick and have an open mind for learning. Never just go out to play. Always learn your lesson. Nice stroke. Perfect on the three. Very confident stroke there on a the two ball. You see the latest fancy predator queue in Gorst hands. Uh, it's not long ago he switched yeah. to predator, got sponsorship from them. So I think he adjusted pretty quickly. Was a nice camera view there from behind. We got to see a glimpse of Fader Gorst setup, very straight. He lost the second rack when he misplayed that safety. And this is a great way to respond. Break and run. Smooth, rhythmic. Taking the lead again, 2-1. Well, our referee in charge is Roman Mirakhmedov here. In the one of the best APBF referees with the best experience. He knows so much about like how the tournament is expected to roll, what to do here and there, and just uh, I think uh, he could 
uh, answer any questions in regard with the rules or how to apply them. Yeah, seems like a smart guy. He's, the head, he's the head referee for uh, this event in Michavovko of Slovenia. He's the tournament director. Mm -hmm. Also, the EPDF referee doing an awesome job. Lev Nikolaevic. That's not his family name, it's Jaroslavtsev. Yeah. Why do they say Nikolaevic? Is the f like uh, named after the father. So so you know his father was Nikolai. Okay, yeah. yeah. And that's like a, f a more formal way to address yes, someone. Yes, that's the only formal way. Okay. So my name would be uh, Alex Giagevic. As my father is George? George, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Alexei Georgievich. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good break. No luck. Wants to make a full hit on the one. Good shot. Good shot, was not easy. Cue ball close to the rail, the one ball was close to the six. Well, probably got a little bit lucky with the final touch of the one. The yeah. Carabao for the seven. Yeah, but luck is the residue of hard work. I mean, he did many things right on that shot. Yeah. Just give it your best. Uh, I believe that uh, the game is fair. So, just well, in the end, it's fair. Yeah. And he's going in the air. He's close to the ball. You've mentioned during the previous final that he he's so good at jump shots. I don't know whether you mentioned this before, but uh, what's your uh, opinion about jump shots in the game of pool? Ooh, they're there. They're there. You know. <laughs> I think it's, uh, I can imagine that uh, people at home who don't play so much that they like to see jump shots and that it's spectacular, etc. You know, but let them have it, let them have it. Good outcome here for Gorst, huge. Because this is super difficult for Ankbolt to get to. Now he needs to avoid any amount of side spin. Nice try. So that's a good roll for Federgorst. He fluked at safety and now the one, two and four are on one side of the table. So part one is getting the correct angle on the four. What about getting uh, to the seven from the six? That's gonna be part three. Because part one is getting the correct angle on the four. Part two is the actual execution of the 4 to the 5 w to get the proper angle on the 6 yeah so in the end you get either the error building up mm -hmm. or you do everything perfect it all depends on the angle that he'll get on the 5 maybe he'll have an angle to, to kiss the 7 to bump it, who knows? Yeah, probably uh, that could be his main idea right now. He just needs to float in between the 9 and 8. And now for... Oh, no. Well, maybe as an angle to go to the rail and bump it. Or avoid the 9. To leave an angle on the 6.
Yeah, so six and seven to the same pocket. Nice, smooth, precise. In between the eight and nine, off of the short drill. Can also come out two rails if he has enough angle there. He's going forward in between the eight and nine, he'd be traveling somewhat towards the side pocket and playing it the way he played. He avoids that. Yeah, so many things to keep in mind. Yeah. Playing full at the top level. I think the the list of choices when you become better becomes longer, but the first couple of choices are on autopilot. It goes so quick. Yeah, at the same time, uh, I think it's important to just to not to get lost uh, in this checkpoint list. Yeah. Like yeah. Not not trying to overthink it. Yeah, that's what weaker players sometimes have. That they think they need to understand and know everything, but in the end, it's it's about instinct and 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 um optimization of execution pulling the trigger stand still back swing and deliver you need to have that some subconscious computer working for you not the the conscious brain well gorse is playing pretty instinctive good rhythm going to be having the break now. Oops. We've got a phone on in the audience. Hang him high. <laughs> <laughs> so they are supposed to get a warning. I've got another question about your background, uh, this time about uh, you as a rugby player. How come you came to the world of pool from playing rugby? Um, well, the clicking of balls was the sound that attracted me and I got injuries and, and I started playing in the bar, just that. And then when I really got injured and quit, then, then someone took me to another city where they had a proper pool hall with nine foot tables. And, uh, you know, it went quick from there. Two years later, I flunked out of university. <laughs> well, it's awesome the way you developed into such a good pool player. Yeah. Well, you know, if you, if you love the game and if you are crazy yeah. enough to commit off. all the time, energy and money that you have to learning, and practicing, then uh, you'll get there. Oh, nice stroke. Nice stroke. You needed luck. Uh, he's okay. Just going wide over here for the three. Yeah, he's okay. It's a, it's a funny angle, though, because he needs to slow roll this. A three-quarter ball hit between a half ball and a three-quarter ball hit. This is a skid danger. And he needs an angle on the three. And that's the advantage of big pockets, because the pockets aren't exactly tight. That he pocketed the ball all the way on the left side of the pocket, giving himself the angle to get that cue ball to the long rail. Well, actually, uh, I think uh, this is one of the reasons for pockets being of that size, just to let the player to alter the cut mm -hmm. angle just a little to once in a while, yes, yeah, so when, when he needs it. Good shot. Wow. We saw Pelivanovic win his uh, final earlier today. He won 9-1 against Capito from Hong Kong. But Federer looks to be wanting to do the same thing. 
playing quick. Well, that's a longer race. That's a race to 11. Just checking how far he needs to get that cue ball back in order to have a good view of the six. By the way, by the way, what's the longest race you ever played to? In a tournament? Mm, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Twenty-seven hours, one <laughs> pass. Um, the longest race. Like the, the Filipinos, they uh, usually play like race to 21 to 35. Oh, in the, in the Philippines, I've played races to 25, yeah. yeah. It's long. And this is experience and savvy. For half an hour, he's playing in a rhythm, playing quick. But he recognizes when it's time to step back and take a longer look. Just making sure. Slow rolling the 8, he'll have a cut on the 9 to the side pocket. A little far, it'll be to the corner. Not too soft, I expect, not a soft stop shot, but he'll punch it. Nice, very nice. Federgorst leads this final 4 1 in the race to 11. And luck is a factor in 9 ball, it's what you do with it. And I'm referring to the fluked snooker of Feder in the previous rack. He fluked the snooker, got the initiative, ran out, and then broke and ran. Well, it's nice. So we are having uh, Europe versus Asia in uh, all three matches, and so far the European players are like I wouldn't say dominating, but well, Sanin produced very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're winning. Well, Christina or was also ahead of her opponent. So so far the European players yeah. are stronger. A good year. Uh, good preparation. Marty Herman writes, because you can write, you can comment on this live stream on Facebook, that the Russians are coming, but the Russians have been, especially in the, in the junior divisions, they have been coming for a long time now. They are the, the, the dominant country at the European, uh, European Junior Championships. Well, but actually, uh, this is, is the thing I was going to mention. Uh, it d didn't just—it doesn't come out of nowhere. It's like uh, it's the system. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, working with uh, the best coaches you could find. So we are very thankful, I think, to Johan Rausing of the Netherlands, who is working with Team Russia currently. Poland has also got uh, some very nice uh, like uh, tradition in uh, youth preparation. Yeah, okay, maybe maybe Poland and Russia together, the most leading nations. Let's not take it away from Poland. Eastern Europe, now Ukraine is, you know, they're getting a, a deeper selection, more players. So Fedor is going to play a jump shot. Very close to the six. Like I mentioned before, Fedor is uh, very good at playing jump shots. Oh. And you see, he makes it in uh, as if and there is no obstacle at all. And, and, and if we get a top view, or in this view, he didn't move. And that's, that's really something to take note of. I mean, we always emphasize how important it is to stay still on the shot, but on the jump shot, to stay still the way he did, impressive. That's tons of practice. He can kick at the two. 
he can kick it to he, he'd be favorite to make it and then play a safe off of the three but he's playing a containing safety now Containing a waiting shot. So was the play here just a uh, thin, thin cut to the two trying to leave it? Yeah, there's no room for the two to go in between the rail and the three. Very thin, I think. Do the same thing. Play a waiting shot. Oh, there was room. Mm. There was room. Well, the kick is there. He can even try to make the two to the side. Yeah. If he plays it, he can even hit it into the four. Yeah. If the four is not frozen. If he plays it soft, he has a decent chance of saving uh, ink bolt. If he doesn't like his odds or his accuracy on the soft kick, he can hit hard. Hoping to find hiding behind the five, seven, six, nine. Okay, oh. the safety play from Engbolt. How from this happened? Mongolia has paid off. He's got his chance. Would be easiest if the three goes in between the six and four, but that's not the case. It's not an easy layout, especially not being down 4 1. Oh, the reverse English grabbed. Yeah, just a little bit. Bringing the cable to the middle of the table. Well, sometimes it doesn't grab at all. Back and forth. Too close, but still okay. Still okay. He he hit that three ball a little thick. That's why he ended up where he is. He can draw all the way back to the short rail. Nice. That's nice. Punched it. Just out far enough of the long rail. Have a stop shot to have a nice leave on the nine. Yeah, nice out. Good win here in rack six for Inkbolt. Played some good solid defense. Uh, he needed this one. Mm -hmm. And a smooth run out, 4 2. <laughs> Duska, they write, the Mongolian fans. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I think we've got plenty of them watching right now. Yeah, cool. Cheering the guy. Where does Mongolian have its roots, do you know, as a language? Rack 7, Feather is getting ready to break.
almost guaranteed to make the wing ball. So the five ball in this case. It's all about keeping the cue ball on the table and getting a view on the lowest numbered ball. Yeah, the five is down and is the only ball. Perfect break, perfect one ball. A route in between the four and eight to go towards the two ball. Taking quite a bit of time. It's possible that I misjudged the angle on the one. Maybe you cannot draw to the long rail to avoid the four. That's why he's considering to leave a longer shot on the two. So would you recommend just to uh, give it a touch of follow? To go into the yeah, rail? Yeah, if, he, net, if, he, if he can't soft stroke it to avoid the four, then he needs to float it in. That was a calculated touch. Yeah, good shot. Plays to a nice rhythm because, as you notice, this wreck is is not super easy. He's taking more time. Just make the ball, stroke it, get back to center table for straight in on the six. Yeah, there are many drills around that teach the players just use, oh. the, use the standard uh, position, drills. position routes. Drills, listen, uh, Fedor Gorst is, is, is part of the Billiard Brothers yeah. team with Serastan and Dudanets. Could you tell us how many uh, you, invo you invite, uh, invented? <laughs> drills? Yeah. Well, I have a couple of games. Yeah, I think I invented more games than drills. But it's... Uh, well, it's... it's, it's it's finding ways to learn. Are there any favorite drills that you like to see your Do students? Do or give? To give, yeah. Well, to see your students before? I, I like to, you know, I, I'll mix it up in the training. You know, it's like hard work, technical drills, or just games where they play uh, kick shots or, or banks or safety shots. You know, there's... Uh, there's the skill the, of executing a proper stroke that you need to practice and there's uh, knowledge and you do different things to learn different things but they the billiard brothers on youtube they have a channel where they play m many nice drills and they have sharpened fedor gorst skills Amazing display of a good break and a solid clinical run out. Extending the lead, 5-2 up now in a race to 11. Yeah, the Billiard Brothers you mentioned, uh, uh, they have some excellent drills, but uh, <laughs> to my view, they are too tough for the audience. Uh, like. I mean, the target audience are amateur players. Yeah. And just uh, th th they can, of course, they get amazed about uh, the skills, but still, mm -hmm. they, they they can do the same. I don't know if you if if the recreational player is the target audience. I think I think their main objective has been to find a way to practice with more intensity. So, if you put a camera on your training, 
then you have a more intense practice. And if you manage to, to run the exercise, you have something to pose, you know, it's, I think it's that. It's not like they, they wanted to have an instructional YouTube channel. Well, actually, Andre Serestan uh, has told me basically uh, this thing. Uh, j just uh, they are trying to make the instructional video. Th their plans are to give some advice on how to break. Oh, so okay, okay. So how to break? He broke well. But the one hit the point of the side pocket. He's not getting any help from the pool guards. There's no offensive kick shot to play here. Yeah, the pool guards just uh, trying to make him work his way through this wreck. Mm. Gets her all here. Yeah, the pool guards do help him. Strange choice of shot, though. Well, I don't think the two ball is going to be easy once it gets to it. It's frozen to the nine. Doesn't pass to the corner. So what do you play? What kick shot do you play? Two rails, trying to stop the cue ball. Yeah, yeah, but you can't stop it playing two well. Yeah, you, you, yeah, 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 you, full hit. Yeah, yeah, you, you can. You, you, yeah. Get, you, you, get, you get to hope for full hit, yeah. Temujin Ankbolt can hit the one. And maybe even can pocket, pocket it, yeah, yeah, to the yeah. corner. But once again, the two ball comes into play. I don't think it even passes to the side. So the safety, another safety. You can mm -hmm. thin the one, send it towards the seven, cue ball towards the eight. Nice call, Alex. A little bit too... Too far, yeah. He yeah. leaves the shot. Too thin. At least the response is there. He can't see the right side of the one, but he can hit it full. I, I think he can hit it thin enough to send the one ball twice across to go to the middle of the short rail. He can also bank the one, that's why he's studying the two ball. Risk reward analysis. What's the risk? What's the reward? Yeah, play in the percentages. Well, we've got a little stumble in the beginning of this wreck. The position is not open. No. The layout. Super difficult because there's no safety on. Doesn't look like it. Oh, what is he trying to do now? Well, you know, if okay, if I he hits the one ball thick, he could m get the cue ball across in between the two and four, but he he would be giving speed to the one that's difficult to control. Alternatively, it's just cutting the one ball and then hoping to see the two ball. Watch out, side pocket. Well, here Federer could play a combo if he wishes. Or maybe even going across along the table just to cross banking the one trying to duck mm. it behind the three and five mm. yeah but the one will go into the eight on the way back yeah two thin a hit required yeah
Good shot. Yeah, this is the easiest and most controllable option to draw back all the way to the other short drill. Get in straight on the two ball and play it safe. I'm examining the exact route for the two ball. Two ball stuck to the nine, so he doesn't have a whole lot of margin. And the four is uh, also there. Yeah. Blocking a little bit of the paths available. Mm, this is in no man's land. Well, perhaps he went for the cluster breakup in there. Yeah. What about the combo, like bank combo? No, it's not no, on. No, it's not on. It's too wild a shot. He's going towards the seven. That's nice. Nice shot. Nice shot. But Temujin Engbold from Mongolia, the two time finalist, sees the two ball. Yeah, not too shabby, being in the finals uh, two years straight. Yeah, that's strong. We've seen in the past uh, at the junior level, uh, some players were dominating, like uh, it was Kopini, I think, uh, winning twice, I think, in a row. Yeah. Yeah. Wu Kai Xia from Taiwan, I think he has won this title twice. Yeah, and uh, also what uh, is amazing, we've had some players uh, winning the Junior Worlds and uh, never playing in future. Yeah. Like giving up pool. And what really, what what is really amazing is Xia Ching Wu winning with the men, the 8-ball World Championship and the 9-ball World Championship when he was 16. Yeah. Ankbolt here at least made sure to overcut the two ball. I must say he's you know he's getting many difficult shots, he's getting few open opportunities. But it's a race to eleven, the tide can turn. Possible scratches there, no. Managed to avoid this. Well, the five is still a problem. I'm gonna see another safety. Doesn't have a nice angle to get on the four, and he can't jack up, he can't elevate. So, in trying to manipulate the cue ball, he hit the three ball thick. Most of the times, if if you know if the angle isn't there, the player will end up getting the cue ball in the proper position but missing the shot. Is it too much thinking about the position? No, it just it, you know, if it's not there and the cue ball is in an awkward position, or you're playing with not enough attention, it's difficult to find that compatibility sometimes. How to play the shot? I mean, that that I think is is Efren Ray's talent that he 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 kno he knows the shot, he knows what to play. And he knows what not to play. 
that's a nice to me is by Ang Paul because he developed the cluster and left the table for his opponent. Very important wreck now. Well, Feather can cut the three ball into the side. The angle of approach is pretty steep. Mm -hmm. Very steep, and he'd be yeah. going towards the 5 7. That was the reason he was trying for the bank. The opposite side pocket was much larger a target, but Ang another, another miss. Yeah. Angbolt not getting any opening. Acknowledged by Gorst. Super thin. And behind the four. Good shot. Very nice. Good shot. No yeah. jump. There is a standard kick. Pretty yeah. routine. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's close but to the pocket. The, the position is kind of under question. If you go one rail and make the three, you could finish mm -hmm. without any like, shot yeah, on the four. Yeah, he's going to stun it. He's going to give it speed. No. The touch, let a scratch. Inevitable. An opening for Engbolt. He was due, I think. Shouldn't be any problem. Top left, the three ball. Straight in, it's on the four and five. Stop the cue ball. Yes. Yeah, nice little angle. Stop or go forward an inch. He doesn't like it. Comes back. Well, didn't want to play the nine to the side, to the closest pocket. Keeping things simple. And five three it is, narrowing the gap. Five three, the two rack lead for Fedor Gorst and Engbolt from Mongolia needs to keep his fingers crossed. Because the success percentage on Fedor's break really is amazing. The amount of times that he has a shot on the ball after the break. By the amount of likes and hearts that I see flying about on the Facebook live stream, I estimate that we have many Mongolian viewers. Nice. I think that's, that, that's the way they appreciate your commentary. <laughs> Make sure to share. Yeah, of course uh, the Mongolian viewers are just happy about uh, Temujin and Volt winning another wreck. Try to keep it close. So it's only the, I would say, one third of the match so far, like eight tracks, in a possible of 21. Look at the two ball. Yeah, that's perfect. It's so tough to beat this man when he's breaking like this. He 
has an angle on the four, so he'll be coming in towards the five ball. Gives him a lot of margin for speed. So here he can really produce quality and get close to the five. Yeah, it's entering the zone at proper angle, just rolling the cue ball along, along the positional area. I don't believe he'll hold the cue ball, or will he? Now six to the same pocket. Uh, feeling pretty confident with his draw stroke. Well, the rest of the rack is textbook. Like a stun, stun, stun. Yeah, it was textbook as soon as that two ball came to land near that long rail, straight in with the, t with the cue ball. Davai, Fedorgorst, 6-3. Yes, that's the way they cheer in Russian. So uh, Kristina Tkac has won the title in the girls division. Feder Feder Gorst is looking on course to win his title. Is Lev gonna throw a party? Uh, have any no promises doubt. been no made? No, no doubt about this one. Are we gonna get free drinks, it's, it's free food? It's kind of dream come true, I think, for him and Team Russia. Yeah. Inkvat tank bolt, ink bolt to break in rack 10. Squatting the cue ball, nine ball. Close to the pocket. Uh, could have wished for two and nine, uh, like being vice versa. Just the opposite for an easy combo. Yeah, well it's gonna probably be a four nine combination. Still three balls to be dealt with. One, two, and three in order to get shape on this possible combo. Cheating the pocket. Hitting a little more of the one ball to get closer to the two. Well, the, the crucial position is here, because uh, the two is pretty deep in the jaws. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, there is uh, too much of a ball to work with, actually. No, and I'm not sure it's going to be a 4-9 combination. I'm not sure he can avoid contact with the 9. Now I'm sure. Three nine combination. To the left, a very emotional Mongolian supporter. If I understood him correctly, it's the man with the hat and the flowery brown jacket. If I understood him correctly, he's the father of uh, Temujin. Yeah, probably a piece of uh, national dress or something like that he's wearing. Oh, he undercut it. He didn't cut the three enough to make the nine, which wasn't that hard. 
maybe even the, the nice idea would be playing uh, t rail first. Rail first, yeah. This way you're almost guaranteed to make the ball. Well, the cloud is a silver lining because the four is tied up with the nine. see Christine at catch in the background not sitting close enough to the one of the trophies she just won Ooh. side pocket ball in hand for ink bolt but there's no 4-9 Kerem on little misjudgment probably by Gorst. Yeah, it's always difficult to execute a shot. Medium difficult shot if you don't know exactly what you're gonna do with the next shot. And had he gotten on the four and nine it'd still be it still have something to play there. Yeah it's important always to have a distinct plan. I think if he puts the cubal center table and thins the four and just comes past the seven ball, you could hook him behind the seven. Or do the long rail close to the four, he can clip the four, make sure the four doesn't hit the nine too hard, and get to the left side of the nine with the cue ball. What about just driving the four ball closer to the nine, playing? The way he positioning the, the cue yeah, right now. Yeah, he's, he's not going to snooker him, I think. He's but not at least he has not given him a shot. Yeah, okay, but with the ball in hand you want a little more than that. Well, once again, the position is uh, very tricky here. That layout. I uh, tend like to mix. Yeah, like this. Mix, I, yeah. I think I think this, this is a good shot to play. Yeah. H hit it thin. Too hard. Too hard. Or too thick. Yeah, it's probably too hard. So Angbolt there failed to put Gorst in a world of trouble. Left the door open. No shot on, I believe. But he can oh. kick at it. Ferrer is capable of stopping the cue ball behind the nine, but I'm afraid that uh, the pace of the four ball will be a bit too much. Nice shot. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Kick and stick. A two rail route around the eight. I think the 8 is too much in the way. Or maybe even the 9 is blocking too much uh, yeah, of this path. Could well be, yeah. I don't think he's, ha he's got a natural path either way. Like He's got to use some English. Oh, that's a nice hit. A free shot here for Gorst, if he can't cut the four, he can bank it. Cross sides. Splits the pocket without much hesitation.
Now the nicest way would be to go directly with stun draw towards the 7, but the 8 is in the way, so he's going forward. And in so doing, he has a little more angle than he'd ideally like. But the pockets are generous, so that doesn't give a lot of pressure. So with this kind of angle on the 7, is it uh, two rails across the table or just Or stay one. Or come yeah. across, but one rail. He can also, yeah, like this. Yeah. But this type of shot on a tighter table, that hangs up a lot. He's gonna come uh, come out two rails towards the nine. He'll have a cut shot on the nine, but that's all right. Well, he could uh, kind of stun draw it, just trying to drive the cue ball closer to the corner pocket a little bit for the rebound angle. Yeah, this is all right. And again, on, on looser equipment and the table, you know, plays generous. Yeah. This doesn't give a lot of pressure because you can hit it a little thick. The pocket will eat the ball. 7-3 for Gorst. Ankbolt, maybe, but that's my interpretation. They are missing a little bit of uh, experience. That's my interpretation. I don't know how often he comes up against uh, um, expert this, this ex kind of position, yeah. against expert players in Mongolia. Uh, how much he watches YouTube, I don't know. But what he did with cue ball in hand there on the four nine, that was a sellout. Oh, do you think watching uh, the YouTube is uh, of import course. important part of uh, like the process? You need to study. Yeah. You need to study, and uh, you know, back in the days when I started, you had to. We didn't have any YouTube. You had to order and buy Acustad's video cassettes, yeah. and then watch uh, Mike Siegel run 115 out for about 40 times, and then the cassette would break down, and you had to buy a new one. It's very and good and we have uh, the C DVDs now. <laughs> nowadays, players learn quicker. In all sports, in all departments, you know, the information is out there. And you got to watch them. You got to learn. I mean, I mean, I if you don't study the game, you're not going to get ahead of the rest of the... Because like these youngsters all over the world, there are maybe 150 young hotshots, you know, very good at pocketing balls. And I think uh, at the same time, one of the important parts is uh, videotaping yourself. And, and watching and yourself back, uh, yeah, and sure. And then just comparing uh, the way you perform at the table and with the top players. Yeah, he had ball in hand on the four ink bolt. And he couldn't figure out a uh, good safety. Well, actually, uh, I think uh, he uh, should have uh, won this wreck earlier with the 3-9 combo. The three nine combo, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think what happened there. Uh, I think he, uh, the ball turned a little bit on him. I think he played it center ball, cutting the. I think I think he had like a mini skid. But then again, it's experience. Had he played it, you know, to overcut it, and a little softer, then he would never have missed the ball. The trick is to, to find margin in pool, in poker, in anything. Where is the margin? If you pocket a ball, if you're playing a kick shot, the safety. Find opportunities. Oh, but in the, in the end, uh, it all comes to execution. Hmm. Uh, I mean, you can be an expert in decision making, but if you cannot perform, sure, sure. But I think <laughs> if if we talk uh, elite level, I think you're expected. Yeah. yeah, I think it's shot selection. And skill. And bottle <laughs> to do it under pressure. <laughs> yeah. So and much involved. Uh, and heart. Yeah. A wild cue ball. 
but in the proper direction not heading towards any pocket needs to come with a good stroke one could play it a little scared and negative soft spin to hold the cue ball and then the pocket will be generous or thump it in and bring the cue ball over to the other long rail held it with these now if the 5 doesn't pass the 8 ball and it doesn't he needs to be precise here How good is that? How good is that? He's close with the proper angle. So from now on everything, all his attention is directed to getting the best possible shape on the six. Which angle do you prefer? I like to play low left and get to the long rail before the side pocket. To the long rail and out almost straight in like this S on the new cloth yeah maybe on another table i play something different maybe a little bit higher from the side rail yeah but it, this is gonna bump out this cue ball of course a little higher a little uh, it could be better but it should be good Not out of the woods. So going two rails forward. Yeah, but you know, it's a TV table. Make sure that the cue ball grabs enough spin. Now he's going back. That's perfect. So takes his time to recompose on the most important shot of this rack. Stays focused and delivers the nine. Yeah, good break. His break is such a big weapon. It also takes off pressure off of his game because he he knows he feels that he's favorite to have a scoring opportunity every time he gets to the table to break the balls and uh, Temujin in this Ankbolt Temujin Ankbolt in this match he's not getting many shots after the break so that puts extra pressure Also having the lead, you know, it's easy to defend the lead if you know you're uh, you're maybe three to one favorite to win on your own break. Yeah, it was kind of the same story uh, with the uh, under 17 juniors when Pechlimanovic was breaking very good yeah. and uh, Capito of Hong Kong was a little bit suffering on his breaks, didn't get good position. Yeah. So it all starts, uh, I think, with cue ball control. Like for the, like for amateurs or for some best of the amateur players, and then once you uh, can control the cue ball, you can uh, start adding speed to your stroke, right? On yeah. the opening break. Yeah. He's squatting the cue ball, ink bolt. Well, now he controlled it perfectly, but the cue ball got kicked. Yeah, but but you know, um, so you have the one ball. And one diamond, one and a half diamond towards center table. If you squat the cue ball there, what he just did, there's a lot of traffic. Many balls are coming around in that area. So, actually, your favorite to yeah, get to get kissed by another ball. And if you really break the balls, like Shane van Boning, the cue ball jumps back more to an area where there's less traffic. He 
we can get behind the four. We can play more containing shot, bank the, the two with more speed towards the six. Then off of the seven towards the four. Well, now examining the path of the two ball for the final position. Boom, nice. So no jumping opportunity for Gorst in this shot. It's only one rail escape from the top camera. Uh, looks like even this option is not available, but it is. I need Maybe a, a, a little massage shot, yeah. <laughs> How good is that? Hello, beautiful, beautiful. Atlichna. Right? So like I said I'm I'm amazed at your <laughs> Russian language skills. <laughs> and now withdraw. Good shot. A two way shot? No, oh, I think he played he played mainly cue ball. Fader is going to jump. He already Pocketed one jump shot in this match. Look at how still he stands when he delivers. Ha! Oh. Hmm. Just as before, as if there is no obstacles. Yeah, very nice. Back to the Billiard Brothers channel, uh, they have a well, kind of a drill uh, where Gorst makes six in a row, six jump shots in a row, and he makes it. Yeah. Uh, he pockets them all. That's crazy. Yeah, there's another Galurakis. It's a Greek, he lives in yes, Norway. Yes, I've seen, uh, I've seen this he video. He you know, he could be a contender. That would be interesting to have him and Gorst and Niels Feyen, who is also a very good jump cue, uh, jump shot player, to have those three do a competition. I'm afraid uh, after this one uh, we are going to change the cloth on the table. Yeah. Oh, smart shot. But the play is there. Yeah, I still like the solution. So the main idea was to drive the four ball to towards the six. Object ball first. Almost got him. Well, that's a very nice piece of advice for those of us watching, playing the leagues or whatever. Object ball first. Yeah, that's what they do in snooker all the time. No, not all the time, but... Oh. He undercuts this. Very difficult though. Very difficult because that cue ball is going to slow down a lot after hitting that short rail. Well, that was a big chance wasted by Temujin. Made it look easy, Gorst. But Kubel, he couldn't have placed it better with his hand. Little distance, perfect angle. Now. Important to leave an angle here on the on the seven.
Yeah, it seems like Engbolt's aspirations in this final are broken. It was a good opportunity he had on the four. Let that go astray, and this is going to be 9-3 in favor for Federgorst. And 9-3 it is. Strong shooting by Feder, just like yeah, he's been doing in the whole tournament. We've got a question on the chat about uh, his age. Uh, he turned 17 this year, meaning he's got still two years at the junior level. Hmm. So watch out. Yeah. Maybe it is three in a row. Who knows? Yeah, very all-round player. There was a funny story about him playing Alex Pegline uh, at the Derby City Classic when uh, there was a very tight match. Mm -hmm. uh, it was probably Alex won on the hill and he was uh, so happy about this one uh, that uh, like uh, he was... Well, Alex played very nice uh, shots in the last track and he was like jumping uh, all over the arena and uh, after that uh, Andrei Serostan uh, who was uh, with Fedor together at the derby he asked Alex do you know uh, you are so happy about uh, beating the 14 year old? <laughs> so even three years ago at the age of 14 Fedor Gorst was pretty formidable opponent and as time goes, he gets even better and better. Yeah, and he travels a lot, which is important. He's up against the big guns. He he did well, I think, two years ago in the uh, in the Bigfoot Challenge at the Derby City. I don't know. Well, actually, I don't remember uh, him participating, but probably well, you're right. Okay, yeah, I need to get the facts straight, but. Uh, Let's keep it at that, that he's just a, a very strong player, especially considering his age. Well, finally, we've got a big table installed in Moscow oh. at one of the locations, so there's an opp opportunity to get prepared for uh, this kind of action. And again, he has an opportunity after the break. He's playing a uh, break, break and run pool. There's an angle here to go two rails towards the eight. Oh, speaking of Gorst, uh, he finished at 11th place at the Derby City Classic last year, mm -hmm. played nine ball, and he finished fourth this year, last winter, playing nine, nine ball also. Wow, that's that strong. That speaks a lot. That's strong. Very strong. Perfect speed here. The eight ball was looming large, made sure to not finish behind it. Almost on cruise control. His performance in this final matching that of Sanjin Pelivanovic in the pupils final. Rack 13, Federgorst is on the hill, leads 10 3. One way traffic. Punishing Engbolt double for that missed four ball, the previous rack. Ran out, then broken, ran out. Yeah, right. That's two points exactly. Two Rex given to his opponent 
by Temujin Angbold with that miss. Oh, he had his chances in this match. Probably could have been like uh, seven to five, maybe. But still, uh, Gorst's lead is not in question. They met in the first match of this tournament, Gorst and Timujin. Ankbold. Nine to three it was I nine suppose. Nine three and then yeah. Hoffman from Germany nine was beaten yeah. nine to two. Yeah. So Yip. So. Yip from Hong Kong was beaten eleven to two. Then Hoffman in the quarter oh no in the semi finals was eleven eight. That was Gorst's closest yeah, match. So if we uh, take apart the semi final it's close like to not given the even forex to the opponents yeah. at the world level. Yeah, an amazing display. Well, once again, you see the break shot. Yeah. Nothing easy. Doesn't manage to control the one. The key will got kicked once again. And he ended up behind the eight ball, so he needs to push out. Pushes out for a kick shot. <laughs> Ricky Evans from Missouri got to the <laughs> got to the quarterfinals here. Lost against Jan van Lierop from the it Netherlands. Was a, it was the best uh, performance from uh, USA juniors, right? He was the only one in the quarters beating his fellow countrymen. Yeah. Uh, Summers, no, that was in the round before. Yeah. In the quarters, uh, he beat. To, 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 get, to get to the single elimination. Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. Yeah, there were the draw was really awkward. We, we had Germans playing against Germans, Polish against Polish. No, not that. But well Russi Russians, Russians, Koreans, yes, that Koreans. That, that was weird, but that's lady luck, you know, because uh, the, the draw was completely random, and uh, the main principle was uh, to make sure that uh, the players who uh, faced one another uh, in the winner's side of the bracket mm -hmm. to advance to the quarters, they don't uh, have to play again. Yeah. Like those people I discussed uh, this matter with both uh, <laughs> told me that that a good thing about this is that uh, these countries are guaranteed to have, to have a medal, yeah, right? True. So it's just uh, the way you look at this. It, of course, it could have been two. Uh, haven't they met each other? But it could have been nothing. Yeah. So a good shot on the one. And he's now in a winning position. Yeah, probably only five balls uh, from the biggest title of his career so far. The biggest trophy. Following in the footprints of Ruslan Chinakhov from Russia, from Moscow, who, yes, also, who, who, won, who won also won the title. Yeah, yeah, he won this event in uh, 2009, I think, in Nicaragua of all places but this has been an amazing a stellar performance of his ability his quality his knowledge as well the catch here on the right do the nets on the left one of the billiard brothers he was a runner-up in his junior world championship in the past yeah stumbled at the last hurdle but his billiard brother Gorst He's gonna do it today, he's gonna do it now. And then surely they're gonna get this party started. Two Russians winning the gold today. Yeah, it's Team EPBF celebrating today. 
No, it's going to have a slightly more Russian taste to it, I expect. <laughs> Fedorgorst, the world junior champion. 11-3, he beats Temujin Engbold from Mongolia. A great performance, a great win. Congratulations, Fedorgorst. And as you said, he's going to be back here next year. Yes, hopefully. No doubt about this one. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thank you. Many thanks to Alex Lely for doing commentary here, live from Moscow, Russia. Thanks everyone and good luck.